is currently 840 and today we are going to Stockholm, Sweden. We haven't quite made it to the port yet, so I think we're going to go grab some breakfast and look around on the top decks before heading to the Royal Theatre to get on our shore excursion. I think we're going to be in town for about 8 hours, so we're going to have plenty of time to look around, so let's get going! We've just hit the coast of Sweden! Time to go to our favorite place, the buffet. It's breakfast time! <laughs> First stop of the day is at City Hall. This is where all of the city's government offices are located. I can't even imagine how amazing it would be to work in this building. I think we're finally gonna head inside. This room is where the Nobel Prize banquet is held every year and they have to fit 1,300 people in this room. I, I don't know how they do it. Here's a better view from upstairs. Now we're in the Golden Hall, which is full of gold and glass mosaics. This work was all done by artist Inar Forsef and inspired by Byzantine artwork. This particular mosaic is of a woman who represents Lake Mederon, which is located in Stockholm. When City Hall was opened in 1923, it was met with heavy criticism for being ugly. Now we're just headed back outside. This view is absolutely stunning. top of a beautiful outlook so let me just give you a quick panoramic view. We're driving by the Royal Palace of Sweden and I did, I did not expect it to be this large, oh my god. But anywho, unfortunately we don't have time to go in, but we are going to get out and walk around a bit. Next to the palace, there is a statue of Carl Yuan the 14th. Unfortunately, the palace is under renovation right now, so it's not looking too good. But the changing of the guard is happening right now. Let's try to get a closer look. This is the tiniest piece of art in Sweden called Jan Puiske, which means Iron Boy. This statue depicts the legend of St. George and the Dragon. It was built in 1489. We are now officially in Gamlastan, aka Old Town. First, there is this fountain pump, which still has clean, fresh water. Then there's the Nobel Prize Museum, but unfortunately we don't have time to go inside. Also, there's these really colorful buildings that date back to the 15th century. Absolutely stunning. Our shore excursion, just because we don't have a lot of time, gave us packed lunches. So first we have this apple juice. They gave us these club sandwiches, which honestly look pretty fancy. Finally, for dessert, we got these chocolate looking cookies update it was actually soft on the inside now we have some free time so i think we're gonna try and shop a little bit we found this cute little touristy shop so i think we're gonna try and buy a couple things for our friends and family one of the most popular souvenirs in sweden is the dala horse which is carved from wood 
and then hand painted. Or so they say. <laughs> Now we're back at the royal palace next to this monument for King Gustav III, which was built in 1808. It's time to get back on the bus and we're gonna head to the Vasa Museum. We made it! This is the Vasa, and it is a Swedish warship built between 1626 and 1628. The ship sank only 4,200 feet into its maiden voyage in the harbor of Stockholm. It didn't do very well. <laughs> For a couple of measurements, the ship is 226 feet long, and it is 172 feet high. The ship was built on the orders of the King of Sweden, Gustavus Adolphus, as part of the military expansion he initiated in a war with Poland and Lithuania. Richly decorated as a symbol of the King's ambition for Sweden and himself, upon completion she was one of the most powerful armed vessels in the world. I've been standing at the back of the ship for way too long just because I can't stop admiring these beautiful wooden carvings. Just jaw-dropping. However, the Vasa was dangerously unstable, with way too much weight in the upper structure of the hull. Despite all of this information, she still set sail and sank a few minutes later after encountering a small breeze. The ship was eventually found in the harbor of Stockholm in 1961. Almost everything was salvaged, including this lifeboat. These cannons were salvaged in the 1700s, just because they were so valuable. Several skeletons were also discovered in the ruins and salvaged as well. On the way out, they have a huge gift shop, but unfortunately we don't have time to look. We made it back to the ship! In total, our excursion was six hours long, which seems like quite a lot of time, but especially when you're on a cruise, you don't have much time in the ports, and it's way easier to go on a shore excursion because A, if your excursion is running late because of traffic or something else, the ship cannot leave you. And they also have the best guides for you. Like today, our guide was so knowledgeable. Just, she was giving us um, information about the economy, parliament, healthcare, and also about all the historical sites around Stockholm because she's born and raised there. So it was a phenomenal tour, definitely worth it. And I think they got a good taste of Stockholm. I will definitely want to come back one day because I want to see everything, but I think that today was great. Like the excursion, perfect 10 out of 10. We got extremely lucky with the weather. It just started to rain as we got back on the ship and you can see so much from here. Back right there is City Hall which is the first thing we saw today and then there's the spire that is in um, the old town so you can really see a lot from here. A couple other things you can see from here are right there is the museum district. Moving over here you can see the amusement park and also um, over here is Edvici Stadium, which was named in honor of the DJ himself, who sadly passed away way too young. And during the winter, because it is dark almost 18 hours a day, the citizens of Stockholm get to vote on what color it's going to be. All right, it's dinner time! For my appetizer, I got the shrimp ceviche. For the main course, I got chicken parmesan. Finally, for dessert, I got the Mississippi mud cake. Okay, so for tonight's entertainment, they have Tony Tillman performing, and I looked him up and he did perform in Las Vegas for a little while, so I'm expecting him to be a great performer, but besides that, I don't really know what type of music he performs or, you know, I generally have no idea what to expect, so I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so we just got back from the Tony Tillman show and it just completely exceeded my expectations. He was so talented, he mainly performed jazz and soul music and the band, wow, the saxophone player, the guitar, like just, it was so much fun. And I highly recommend seeing him if you're on Voyager of the Seas. We are now back out in the Baltic Sea and we're now headed for Estonia. 
So we should be there pretty early tomorrow morning. All right, so it is currently 11.58, so I'm gonna call it a night. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content from me in the future, please consider subscribing as well. But I hope to see you in the next video. So have a good night.